For those of you who feel like the house and power of X have been moving kind of slow, there's a reason why they feel like this is a masterpiece. For all you action people, things are about to speed up. My name is Dory and this is SEO Comics. We are continuing our covers of Ox and Pox as House of X, Power of X, with Power of X, number three. So our story starts off with a breakdown of the surviving solo mutants. You have Apocalypse and his four horsemen. Obviously, Apocalypse is the original Apocalypse. War is Wolverine, and this is the original James Hollett, one you all know and love. Death is Zorn, the original Zorn. Now, if you guys know the history of Zorn and you're like, the original Zorn? I mean, yeah, it's so convoluted, it's not funny. But yeah, this is Zorn, not changed, this original. Pestilence is North. He is a second generation chimera made by Mr. Sinister. He's a cross between Lord Dane and Emma Frost. And Famine is pretty much Krakoa and the dead body of Cypher. So it's a symbiote relationship. Almost like Venom. So on the next page, we have two that didn't make it. That was Sila Bell. She was the hound that we met in Power of X number one. And Percival, who said one line and pretty much bit the bullet. He was actually an original pure blood mutant. He had like ghost mutant powers and he was the reason why they was able to get in and out of places undetected. So he was a big loss. You have Cardinal, who is a third generation Chimera. He's a cross between Nightcrawler, Jean Grey or Rachel Summers and Ajax. We also have Rasputin 4, who is a five gifted Chimera. She's third generation. We got Quentin Choir, we got Colossus, we got Kitty Pride, we got Lower Kitty, and we got Guther Bane, which most of you guys probably don't even know who that is. Like, he debuted in like X Men number eight back in like the 60s. So, yeah, it's an old character. And then we got Mother Akuba, which, if you guys are paying attention to House of X number two, and you dealt with the life that dealt specifically with Apocalypse, then you know who this is. So on the next page, we see Omega Sidno, and she's like the Church of Ascendancy is on fire. And then Rod is pretty much doing his own thing, and he doesn't give two sh. So Omega Sidno is like, we should probably look into it because they're saying that it's the mutants that are attacking. And then Rod's like, why in the hell would they attack the church? When they attack, they normally attack us directly. So Omega Sentinel's like, look, there's probably some kind of direct correlation between what they're doing right now and what you're trying to figure out. Now, this is still the beastly Nimrod, but it's also the silly Nimrod. He goes, such a pity, the tragedy of it all. It's one of why I'll get any sleep at all. And Omega Sentinel's like, we don't sleep, Nimrod. In fact, that's why the mutants hate us, because we don't dream. And Nimrod's like, what good are dreams? Like, what good is their dream? It's just about as stinked as they are. So Omega Sentinel gives him that I am serious woman stare. And then where I was like, what? She goes, look, their inconsistent actions are bothering me and we need to investigate. And then where I pretty much goes, fine, go ahead and investigate, you know, do whatever you need to do. And she goes, you going with me? It's like, no, I'm not coming with you. So she flies off and goes, suit yourself. And he's like, I always do. Now we cut back to the church and you got Cardinal who is stabbing this priest into his shoulder. And the priest is like, why are you doing this? And Cardinal's like, normally I am a pacifist, but it comes a time when even somebody like myself has to make a point. So I ate a terminal apocalypse seed, which is going to overcome my genetic disposition to nonviolence. And even though I'm going to die and it's probably going to hurt, I'd rather die this way than the way that you're going to die. Like, why do you betray your own kind for the machines? I don't just do it for the great machines. I do it for God. So I don't know who got lit up in the background, but somebody got lit up. And the priest is like, you see, God's here. As Omega Sentinel comes with a bunch of Sentinels behind her. So Zorn's like sweet annihilation. This dude's been begging to die ever since this series started. So Rasputin 4 is like, all right, they brung everyone just like we expected. We got to hold them off. So now we cut to Apocalypse, Wolverine, and Kakoa Doug, or Doug Kakoa. They're pretty much in the machine's archives, and they're looking for the exact date that Nimrod came online. But then there's an alert, and now Nimrod knows that they are there. And he is on his way. Kakoa and Doug pretty much goes through the systems and he goes ha i got it we can go wolverine is like hold on time out i smell something he turns a corner and he gets ridiculously lit up i mean <laughs> he's lucky he's wolverine 
as anybody else would have been done. So obviously the person who provided the fireworks was Nimrod and he goes, interesting to find you here. There is nothing located in this sector except for old data and old machines. Why are you guys here? So on the next page we see Cardinal is pretty much done and you got Rasputin 4 with Zorn right in front of Omega Sentinel. And Omega Sentinel's like, we just got word. Nimrod's dealing with the other compadre, so this little distraction, yeah, it's not working anymore. So Rasputin 4 is pretty much telling her to stay back. And then Zorn's like, no, come closer. Because this is an end that I always wanted. So the Mega Sentinel's like, oh, you're threatening with the singularity? I don't think you guys will. You guys like to hang on to things, even though you ain't got nothing to really hang on to. Besides, you have any idea what lies at the heart of a real black hole? I'll give you a hint. It's where we're headed. It's where we're all headed. So the Rasputin 4 goes, you know what? You're right, I don't. And she takes off Zorn's mask. Rasputin 4 goes, no. And there is a ridiculous black hole explosion or implosion. I don't know. It's something. So on the next page, we see Nimrod go flying. So, you know, in Samanor has something to do with that. So he turns to Wolverine and goes, you need to take this and get out of here. And Wolverine goes, no, I'm staying. And Apocalypse's like, if you could see yourself, you would know how foolish that statement is. Get out of here. I'll be right behind you. Kokoa opens up the gate and Apocalypse stares down three Nimrods. So Wolverine is going through the gate. He turns around to see Apocalypse catching a swift one. So while Apocalypse is getting jumped by Nimrod, Wolverine comes up to this tomb. Now, if you're an Apocalypse fan, you know he ain't no punk. And he gives one Nimrod whew, everything he wanted more as he crushes his head. But the other two jump on him and pretty much start to overwhelm Apocalypse. And Wolverine opens up the tomb and we see it's Myrex or Myra Apocalypse. It's the Myra from The Knife Life. He uploads a crystal into Myra that has information about when Nimrod goes online. He goes, you got it? She goes, yes. So she goes, what now? And Wolverine is like, he said that we should see the old man pretty much told me to send you on your way because there's nothing to save here. And he goes, I'm sorry. And she's like, it's okay. I got what I needed. And besides, this is what you do. As Wolverine stabs the bejesus out of her. So now to give you guys an update, we saw how the ninth life pretty much ended and they got the information for the tenth life, which we are currently covering right now. And as you can see, the sixth life we still don't have. Why? Because that's the life that went a thousand years and then we got to deal with the Liberian, which we're still covering as Power of X continues. Anything I say past this point is pretty much rambling. So you know what? DJ, turn it up.